And we're back with the screen team on today's talk, 930 KWOC. The show is being brought to you by Whitworth Gift Chest Jewelers, where Walmart is next door to us, Fearless Social. They uh, probably support organizations like Ofra, the Boys and Girls Club, You Can, and the Bread Shed, and Popper Bluff Drywall. Commercial and residential, give them a call at 714-3127. Popper Bluff Drywall, we rock. We're doing a theme show today on adoption movies. We already did one with Helen Hunt called Then She Found Me. We're getting ready to review Annie, and then we'll get into uh, Juno. But before we do that, want to talk with uh, Kim Scott, one of our reviewers right now. Kim, you're getting ready for a big event coming up um, April the 18th, I yes, believe. Yes, that's correct. It's the, the pool tab drive. Tell us about yep, it. Yep, it's a pool tab drive for Brandon Scott which is my son, mm-hmm. and he has been uh, saving tabs for the Ronald McDonald House for the past uh, 10 years now. Mm-hmm. And this is our, like I said, third annual event, and it'll be held at the American Legion on PP Highway. Ronald McDonald will be there, rain or shine. Um, people have the opportunity to come out from 10 to 2, drop off their pool tabs that they saved. We'll have a silent auction, raffle, a bake sale, and the Legion will be cooking up some awesome lunch and Hopefully have some musical entertainment. Still working on that part. But um, all the money benefits the Ronald McDonald House Charities of St. Louis. Well, great. Um, just out of curiosity, what do I, I've, I've had a lot of people ask me this question. What do people, what do they do with the, the pool tabs? There's a scrap metal company in uh, St. Louis. And the first Saturday of each May, they have a tap top pandemonium mm-hmm. at the Ronald McDonald House on Park Avenue. And the whatever amount of tabs like Brandon turns in on that day, uh, the scrap metal co- company will match that donation. That's so that's cool. why everyone just, you know, instead of turning their tabs in to the Ronald McDonald House throughout the year, they save them up and give them a brain and once a year, so it'll, it'll make double the money. Yeah, that's one of the cool things, Sabrina, when we go to this event. Um, <laughs> you guys take a picture. You guys have not, like, like bags. You guys have tubs, tubs. Yeah, close like to 10, 80. 10 to 15 tubs it's of... trailers of, of tubs. Of, of yes. pool tabs. Yes. It's it's the coolest thing. It is yeah. very very cool because every time you see that, then you get more excited and you're more dedicated every following year. So you've done an excellent job. Oh, thank you. Keeping people it. aware, because how easy is it to take that can and just toss it? Oh yeah, yeah. it's and that's as easy why, to pop the top and then yeah. toss it. And that's <laughs> why when Brandon was like you know diagnosed with leukemia in the hospital, we tried to teach him a way of giving back, and we thought how easy is it just to pull off a tab? Oh yeah, you know, throw it in a little collection house or a ziploc bag, yeah. whatever. A cup. We do that at home. Just throw in a cup, even. And if people want more information, they, there's uh, like an event page on Facebook, correct? Yes, it's under the uh, pull tab drive for Brandon Scott slash third annual. Okay, very good. That's happening April the 18th. Check yes. it out. Uh, our next movie is Annie. Uh, this we're doing the the older version, the 1982 version, and uh, this is a movie based on uh, the popular musical about uh, Little Orphan Annie. Correct. Yes. Um, little Orphan Annie. She lives in an orphanage in uh, New York City, I believe, and. Uh, She's looking to uh, to get adopted, but uh, she hasn't uh, had uh, too much luck yet. And then that's when uh, Big Daddy Warbex comes into to town. He wants to spend the day with a, an adopted child for for some reason, correct? Something like that. Yeah, she. I believe what I got out of the movie that you know that she had half a locket, mm-hmm. and um, she was always hoping that her parents would come back to find her one day yeah. when in actuality they were killed in an, an accident mm-hmm. and um then one day his assistant arrives to to the orphanage and they're just looking for a child to, to, for for him to spend a week with he's a billionaire kind of like yeah. a promotional kind of right thing, to spend a week good. with and so they choose annie to go and um then gradually they start to develop this relationship and i tell you she is just a sweetheart of a little girl so i just love this movie i yeah. love the songs and everything about it and and uh like i said he starts to fall in love with her yeah and he decides that he wants to to adopt her to adopt her and then that's when All miss the, hannigan oh uh, yeah miss hannigan Carol she's... Burnett, she <laughs> steps in and they uh originally were trying to find her natural parent her uh, birth parents right so they had put up a fifty thousand dollar reward and so miss hannigan was trying to be sneaky and got her brother and his wife her girlfriend and try to try to get that reward to be the parents right and uh then in the end she got a heart miss hannigan did (laughs) that's that's the one thing i like about this film miss hannigan's mean she's evil but yet she's okay at the end she's all right she's a nice guy 
Yeah. No. Um, yeah, I love this. I love this film. Um, I remember seeing this when I was uh, real little with my parents. My dad is really into musicals, as I've mentioned before on this show many, many times. So I've I've, I've seen this movie a zillion times. And um, the one besides the music, the one key that I love about this film is is Carol Burnett as as Miss Hannigan. She is. I mean, this this is like her role. This this <laughs> she is so perfect for this role. I mean, just funny and and. Uh, and memorable um so I, I recommend this film to uh to anybody if you like musicals um it's every song is is uh memorable and it's uh definitely um definitely a keeper sabrina do you agree um i do and i grew up seeing this movie you know it was it's been around a while yes just saying um <laughs> you were like 20 when this movie came out right <laughs> right when was this movie out? 82? I was yeah, two, I was, so that would have made you 22. I was 82? Yeah. Honey, you were two. Right, right. Means I was seven. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> Whatever, man. Okay, um, maybe I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> I was 12. <laughs> Keep on adding more digits on there. Okay, so, um, yeah, you know I was 12 too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Dad gum machine was in my class. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, um, but still, it was it was just a great movie, and it was one of those that actually would come on TV of almost every year, and you could kind of anticipate, oh, I get to watch a show that you have to wait a year to see, mm-hmm. and I remember just looking forward to, oh, 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 Annie's going to be on, you know, I gotta be, I gotta be good this week, and I gotta get my chores done, <laughs> and I gotta make sure I'm in good standing so I can control the TV one night or <laughs> whatever, but. Um, then you get away from all that stuff, and then now it's so available, you could just pull it up anywhere on any internet connection and see it. Right. And it's mind blowing still. Us oldies think about that kind of stuff. Well, and I think she's also like the type of little girl, like when she was so excited to be going to the to movies. War, but yeah, and like to the, yeah, yeah. With, went going home with Mr. Warbucks at the time, because at the end she called him Daddy Warbucks, which was just yeah. wonderful. But then, you know, she got to go to the show and she was so excited, came home and life was actually starting to turn the corner and be perfect for her. And then it was getting taken away from her again, mm-hmm. you know, but you could just tell by looking at her face like, oh, it's, it's okay. Cause she, you could tell she was a strong little girl, yeah. you know, by growing up in the orphanage yeah. and stuff. And, and it just gave, gave you the aspect of all the little, you know, all the little kids who's out there that, that needs that, not even just Mr. Warbucks, just anybody. You know, to love them like yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's the hardest part to remember when you're yeah. watching a movie like this because it is so entertaining mm-hmm. that you forget there's really a message there. Right. And there's multiple layers of that message. And I guess they just, whoever decided to make it so fun, filled, musical, and all that, you know, you, you end up laughing so much that you forget why. Yeah. Why is this movie even that fun to watch? Yeah. And why why should it be so fun? You know, because um, when you think about it, you know, if I was to just break it down psychologically, you think the content of this movie, the story behind it is just atrocious. Right. Um, A, that there was orphanages that had living conditions that this is actually really true. Um, and that even today, kids in foster care come from conditions just like that. Right. But in this movie, we can sit back and laugh. Yeah. But in reality, you have to stop and remind yourself, hey, that's right. I need to be thinking about these kids. Pray for them or whatever, but support groups that are out there to try and help them so that they don't all have to feel like they got forgotten. Right. And Annie feels forgotten. Right. Well, it's kind of the song she sings at the very beginning about her parents uh-huh. and then singing Hard Knock Life, Hard Knock Life, excuse me, and then the song Tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, those all, you know. They're inspiring. Yeah. They're they're showing that the car, the heart is stronger than the body, mm-hmm. and um, even as a little kid, you can have an unlimited supply of hope. That's right. But you have to m- make yourself have it, yeah. and that's what Annie does. Her character outshines everything else that's going on in the story, and I think that's pretty amazing. But it's also, like I said, it's so entertaining that you forget, oh, it's a movie about adoption. Yeah. I love this. I love this movie. Leaping right. Lizards. Yes. <laughs> now, I haven't seen the new one, the, it's, revi- it's the revised really one. And I almost, I resent the fact that they even did it again. Yeah. You know, and I, I but I, I'm intrigued by the little girl that plays Annie because I remember her from another movie that I just fell in love with her. 
and then uh, her her appearance at the Oscars and things like that. They, the, she's an amazing kid, and I want to know more about her. But I resented the fact that they made Annie right. again. Uh, not the way that they made Annie again, but that they made Annie again, and especially put Cameron Diaz in. That's, That's what I was going to say. That Who in the, the world yes. thought that was a good replacement? Right. That was or the thing. There's no replacement for Kira Burnett there and Cameron Diaz, though I love her as an actress. She didn't touch Kira Burnett's part. Yeah. So no, that's no. hard, and I don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. You heard it from Sabrina. But it is cute. It's a cute show. <laughs> Coming up after the break, we're going to review, review Sabrina's adoption pick, uh, Juno. That's next on Today's Talk, 930 KWOC.